Hello, my name is Jose Osorio. I'm an electrophysiologist in Miami, Florida. Today we're going to talk about atrial fibrillation ablation and the success rates depending on what type of atrial fibrillation you have. When we're performing an ablation of atrial fibrillation, it's always easier for the physician and for the patient, even in terms of accomplishing better success rates, if the procedure is done earlier in the natural history of atrial fibrillation. When we look at patients with atrial fibrillation, there are three types. We talk about paroxysmal atrial fibrillation when you have short episodes that are self-terminating, typically lasting less than seven days. Then you have patients with persistent atrial fibrillation that will have spells lasting longer than seven days that typically require an intervention to stop it. And then patients that have long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation, which is when it has lasted longer than a year. Patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, most clinical trials, when you look at clinical success, have had success rates over 80%. In some studies, over 85%. This is clinical success, which means you no longer have symptomatic atrial fibrillation. For patients with persistent atrial fibrillation, not only the success rate is a little bit lower, perhaps is it in the 70, 75% range, but there's also a higher chance that a repeat procedure may be needed. When we now talk about patients with long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation, longer than one year in duration, the success rates are significantly lower, the 50 to 60% range, with also an increased need for repeat procedures. Therefore, it is important to understand that to have the best results, treating atrial fibrillation early in its disease process will be very helpful for you as a patient.